Hello everybody, and welcome back to Monster Hunter D&D. Monster Hunter D&D is a Monster Hunter themed D&D campaign that I'm currently in. It takes place in the New World, a continent in Monster Hunter. If you don't know anything about Monster Hunter or D&D, don't worry. I will do my best to explain everything simply, so you aren't left out in terms of monsters. This is currently episode 6 of the series, with the other 5 linked in the description below. In the last episode, an Owlin from Farley's Pass showed up and gave us a quest that nearly killed us. However, at the end, we got a scroll that should help lead us to hatch Crackers. Crackers is the name of the Dire Morales in the egg Farley has obtained. It should be stated that at this point in time, the party finally settled on a name for us all. We have decided to call ourselves the Angst Squad. Everyone has angst. The characters, the players, the DM. Everyone has angst. We all gather at the canteen for a meal that Aziz cooks up for all of us, and he makes sure that Farley eats his. As we eat, Farley opens up the scroll and begins to read it. It says, In the furthest part of the forest is a hidden opening, Farley says. The furthest part of the forest? Furthest from what exactly? Isaiah asks. I don't know. It doesn't say. Farley answers. Well, it could mean the furthest from Mystera, or the furthest from the beach, Eldair suggests. But what if it means the furthest from something else entirely? Would we have to search the entire forest in order to find it? Isaiah states. Well, if it's the furthest part, then we don't need to search the entire forest. Failing starts. We just need to check the perimeter. Everyone looks over at Failing for a quick second. That would actually be a good idea. If it's the furthest from something, it would have to be at the edge. Farley says. Yes, it would. Now, is everyone ready? Failing asks. We all finish our meal and head out to the ancient forest. We begin to search along the edge of the forest before reaching a small clearing in one of the thicker parts. The clearing is where the Pookie Pookie nest is located for those who have played Monster Hunter World. For those who didn't, the nest is located up on a ledge at the edge of the forest, next to a rocky cliff covered in vines and other plant mass. As we search around the area, Farley notices something behind the vines. It is a small crack in the cliff face, and it appears to lead somewhere. He alerts the group, and we all gather together. Phelan volunteers to check it out. We watch as they squeeze himself into the crack and slowly disappears into the darkness within. A minute goes by before she comes back out. I found something, Phelan says before going back in. Everyone takes turns squeezing through the narrow passage. The passage goes on for a bit before coming to a small clearing that appears to be in the middle of the cliff. There is sunlight shining down at the opening from above, and small vegetation on the ground, and more vines on the cliff wall. On top of that are these three things that look like stone water wells but with a top to them. All three wells surround a small thin pedestal, and on the back wall are small holes carved out. We all begin to inspect everything. Farley makes his way to the back wall with all the holes. There was some writing next to them and draconic. Fortunately, Farley can read Draconic. Unfortunately, most of the writing appears to have been weathered away over time. All that Farley can make out of the words, insert ruins. This wall says something about ruins. Does anyone know what it's talking about? Farley asks. Isaiah walks up to inspect the wall with Farley. As he does, he feels his foot kick something to the side. He looks down and finds a round stone on the ground. He picks it up and notices that it is cold to the touch. This rock is freezing, he says. Farley looks over at the rock in Isaiah's hand, and it clears away more of the vines from the cliff wall. Above the holes carved into the cliff wall is more writing in Draconic. The words here are clear and unaffected by the elements. They read, Heat, Cold, Heavy, and Energy. Farley looks back at Isaiah's. Hey, Isaiah, can you put that in the hole right here? He says, pointing to the hole that has cold written over it. Isaiah places the rock in the hole, and it fits right in. 
As he does, the writing begins to give off a faint glow. It fits. Thank God, that was really cold, Isaiah says. Hey everyone, Farley starts. We're looking for three more circular rocks. Heat, heavy, and energy. Everyone begins to look. Eldir finds a rock that gives off warmth. I think I found one, he says. He takes it over the Farley and slips it in the hole with heat written over it. The writing begins to glow faintly. God damn it, this one is a pain in my ass to lift, Isaiah shouts. He's struggling to pick up a rock smaller than the others so far. Elder comes over and helps Isaiah carry the rock. They place it in the hole with the writing heavy written over it. The writing begins to glow faintly. Would this rock work? Vahelectria asks. He hands Farley a circular stone. The stone is glowing faintly like the rest of the words. It might, Farley says. He takes the stone and places it in the hole. Nothing happens. Might not be the right one, Farley says. I think Farley is looking for this one, Fainlin says. He hands Farley another stone. This stone looks normal, but when Farley holds it, he can feel it vibrating. Oh, thanks, Faleen, he says. You're welcome, Faleen replies. Farley removes the glowing stone from the hole and places the vibrating one in. The writing above the hole begins to glow. Once all the writings are glowing, a loud click can be heard from the clearing. We all begin to look around. We don't see anything happen. Maybe we only solved part of the puzzle, Eldir says. Maybe. Do we know what the pedestal is for? Farley asks. Isaiah runs over to the pedestal. It says something in Draconic. Let's see. An egg from the bottom of the sky and three volunteers to stand on the plates. That's the sum of what it says. Isaiah answers. An egg from the bottom of the sky, Elder asks. How can there be an egg in the sky? Phelan asks. Maybe it's an egg-shaped cloud, Well, Electra states. Everyone looks at him. What? he asks. How would we even get a cloud? Isaiah asks Vahelectria. We could climb to the giant tree in the center of the forest, Vahelectria suggests. Isn't... isn't there a Rathalos next to the top of that tree? Phelan asks. Everyone other than Vahelectria's eyes grow wide. We need a Rathalos egg? Farley asks. Maybe... Fainlin answers. I don't see how a Rathalos egg would help us get a cloud, Vahelectra says. No, Val. Fainlin is saying maybe it's asking for a Rathalos egg, Farley clarifies. So, we're supposed to fight a Rathalos for one of its eggs, Isaiah asks. I'll go. You all don't need to get hurt for me, Farley says. Farley, we've been over this. You're not letting you just run off to your death, Elder states. But I don't want you all to get hurt for me. This whole thing is so crackers can hatch. This is my responsibility. If anyone should face the Rathalos, it's me, Farley says. Oh, the Rathalos isn't there right now, Vahelectra says. Everyone looks at him. How do you know that? Isaiah asks. Vahelectra looks up at the group. Me and Captain Fuzzy Boots have spent our spare time here, keeping an eye on all the monsters in the forest. The Angina should be sleeping in the caves right now. The Pookie Pookie should be attacking the Jagoras pack for the Apanath they hunted down by the beach. And the Rathalos should have left to hunt for an hour ago. It'll be another half hour before it returns to its nest. Vahelectra answers. 
Everyone looks at Valencia with their jaws dropped. They never expected for him to do something like that. Val, that's impressive, Farley states. I may not be smart by your standards, but I'm smart my own way, Valencia replies. It should be stated that Valencia has 20 in wisdom, but only 8 in intelligence. For those who don't know what that means, wisdom has a positive modifier of 5, and his intelligence has a negative modifier of 1. Essentially, he isn't book smart, but he is clever and has a lot of common sense. Farley and Faleen both volunteer to go get an egg from the Rathlos nest. They head to the big tree and climb up to the top. Upon reaching it, they are told to make a stealth check. You see, they don't find a Rathlos at the top of the tree. Instead, they find a sleeping Rathian guarding the nest. Faelene casts Path Without a Trace, which gives him and Farley a plus 10 to stealth. Farley passes the check, and they sneak into the nest. He grabs an egg and begins to leave. The DM says to roll another stealth check. Farley's player rolls. The Rathian begins to lift its head and move it to the other side. Farley lets out a sigh. He heads back to Faleen, and the two make their way back to the group. We got it, Farley says as he enters the clearing. You should have warned us about the Rathian. Phelan says. You all seemed like you were interested in the Rathalos, Bahelectra replies. Let's not argue right now. Let's just get the egg and... Wait, what do we need to do with it again? Elder asks. We need to place it on the pedestal and have three people stand on the pressure plates. Isaiah answers. Okay. Farley places his egg on the pedestal. It's ready. I'll take one of the pressure plates. Farley walks over to the one of the well-looking contraptions and stands on it. A click can be heard. I'll take another, Elder says as he walks over onto another plate. It clicks, just like the other one. I can take the last, Vahelectra says. He steps on the last one, and it clicks. All three plates then drop a foot down into the ground. The ground in between the plates and the pillars begins to move. It starts to sink down. Some parts sink down further than the others. After 10 seconds, it stops. We take a look and notice that the ground there has formed a staircase. It seems to go further down than what the light shining through the clearing can illuminate. What we are looking for is down there. Farley says. We should probably put the Srathalos egg back first. Phelan says. Yeah, we should. Farley stops. As he begins to speak, he looks over at the Rathalos egg. The egg itself seems to have changed. It became red in color, with black arrows pointing towards the top of the egg. What happened to it? Farley panics. Fainlin slowly approaches the egg. They pick it up. I've heard stories of a Rathalos egg like this. We can't return it. I'll... I'll take care of it, he says. Are you sure? Farley asks. Yes, Fainlin answers. For context... Only me and the player playing Faelin recognize this egg. But only Faelin's character recognizes it. It is from one of the spin-off Monster Hunter games called Monster Hunter Stories 2. And it plays a big part of the story of that game, so... I'm not going to spoil it for you. Farley takes a quick look down the stairs. It seems to go down for forever. He comes back up and asks for a torch so we can all see the steps on our way down. We spend ten minutes on the descent alone. Once we reach the bottom, we can see light peering into the staircase. We walk through a doorway carved into the stone. 
we enter a massive cavern. The cavern doesn't look natural, but instead man-made. There are channels filled with water along the edges of the cavern, and two channels that go down the middle. The top of the cavern is littered with bioluminescent crystals, and the water channels are filled with bioluminescent bacteria that combine, giving off enough light to illuminate the entire cavern. At the back of the cavern is some kind of temple made of stone, with what appears to be two statues standing in front of them. Farley puts out the torch. That temple in the back must be what we're looking for, he says. So what are we waiting for, Isaiah says as he begins to head towards the temple. We all follow Isaiah and walk across the cavern. As we approach the temple, we all take some time in to observe it. Farley and Isaiah walk up the stairs and head inside to take a look inside. Elder, Phelan, and Valhaxria take a look at the statues outside the temple. They appear to depict some kind of monster. Elder recognizes them immediately. They are statues of the Elder Dragon Kushala Deora. Or at least, that's what they appear to be. As Elder takes a closer look, he realizes they aren't statues. They are actually the monster Kushala Deora. But they're not moving. They're frozen. See, Kushala Deora is an interesting monster. It is an elder dragon that looks like your classic dragon. Four legs, two wings, a head, a tail, etc. They have amazing power and control over the air and wind currents, using them to deliver powerful attacks. They can even cloak themselves in black wind that pushes everyone away from them, making them a pain in the ass to fight sometimes. Their scales are a bronze color. Normally. See, Kushala Dior's scales are made of iron. It offers them amazing defense, but, much like iron in real life, it will eventually rust. When Kushala's scales begin to rust, they become a variant called Rusted Kushala Deora. They are much more aggressive than the regular version. The reason behind this is because they are trying to make sure that the area around them is safe for when they shed their scales. They shed them all at once, breaking out of them like they are an exoskeleton. After the shed, their iron scales will regrow, turning them back into a regular Kushala Deora. The problem is, though, their scales regrow thicker. This makes them more powerful, but that means that the more and more they shed, the thicker and thicker their scales become. The thicker they become, the harder it is for them to break out of their scales. Eventually, their scale exoskeleton becomes so hard to break free from, and they eventually rust over. When that happens, they can no longer move, and they will eventually starve to death. These two statues we are looking at aren't statues. They're Kushala Deors that have rusted over and died. Seeing two dead Kushala's Eldir can't help but shed a tear. Are you okay, Eldir? Phelan asks. I'm... I'm fine. Just... give me a minute. Eldir answers. These Kushalas, they're gone. Did you care for these elder dragons, Eldir? Phelan asks. Before Elder can answer, Vahelectra interrupts. Did you say elder dragons? He demands. Yeah, Kushala Deora is an elder dragon, Phelan answers. Not only did Phelan tell Valectra that Kushala is an Elder Dragon, but he's looking at two dead ones, so now he knows what they look like. For once, Isaiah didn't do the stupid thing in the party. Let's catch up with the others, Eldir says. He and Phelan walk up the stairs and head into the temple. While Electra stands there in front of the corpses, of an elder dragon. He takes his hand and grabs its leg. He gives it a squeeze. 
a hard one. He grits his teeth as he does it. A small piece of the scale chips off. A smirk appears on his face. Good, he thinks to himself. I can break these scales. If I can do that, I can kill them. He takes his hand off the kshala and follows Faelin and Eldir inside. The inside of the temple is rather small. After a long hallway, it's just an altar with a monster skull on it. There has to be more to this, Farley says. Maybe there's a secret door or something? Isaiah inquires. What's going on? Faelin asks. We're trying to look for some kind of secret. There has to be more here than just some skull. Farley answers. This place is already in the most hidden part of the forest, down a secret flight of stairs. You really think the ancients would make another hidden area? Elder asks. Farley finds a small stone button in the bottom of the altar. He presses it, and a hidden door opens up from the wall behind the altar. Well, I stand corrected, Elder says, surprised. Come on, everybody. Let's see where this goes, Farley says. Everyone walks through the door and down a small hallway. We enter a big and massive room. On the other side is a door, but standing in front of the door stands a Lao Shen Lung. A Lao Shen Lung is another elder dragon. It looks like a drake with copper red scales on top and cream colored scales on its underbelly. Its back and tail have black spikes on them, and even though it walks on all fours, it is capable of standing up on its hind legs. The rather large, standing at over 69 meters high. This one is standing on its hind legs and guarding the door on the other side. It begins to speak to the party in Draconic. What are you all doing here? It asks. Oh, great elder, we aren't here to fight. We only seek knowledge to hatch an egg. Isaiah replies, also in Draconic. Others have come here before. They lied of their motives. Their bones were reduced to ash by my flames, and that ash has disintegrated into dust by time. What makes you so different? The Lao Shen Lung demands. We are here because of me, Farley starts. He takes a step forward. I'm trying to find a way to hatch crackers. He's my Dyer Morales, but he's still in an egg. I don't want him to spend his entire life in an egg. I want him to be able to see the blue sky and feel the sea air on his face. Farley and the Laotian Lung stare at each other for a while. Are all these people all that came with you? The Laotian Lung asks. Yes. Farley answers. Very well. Behind this door lies the library with the knowledge you seek. You, young Owlin, are looking for a book called The Boiling Sea. The Lao Shen Lung says. It moves out of the way of the door. We all head inside. Now, you might be wondering, what about Fahelectria? He is standing in front of an elder dragon. Wouldn't he try to kill it? Well, there's a simple explanation. He doesn't know the Lao Shen Lung is an elder dragon. I have previously stated that he doesn't know what is and isn't an elder dragon. But Isaiah did call it one. Surely Vahulaxia would have heard that, right? Well, you see, the conversation with the Lao Shen Lung was in Draconic. And everyone in the party speaks Draconic. Except for Holectria. That's right. He is a dragonborn. That doesn't speak Draconic. I know it's confusing, but trust me. 
I have a reason for it, and it has to do with his backstory. Now, once inside the library, we are all at awe. It is a massive place, with bookshelves going up so high, they have landings next to them to get the books from up there. Farley immediately begins to search for the book that Lao Shen Lung told him about. Isaiah looks at the landing and decides to fly up there. See, Isaiah is a gem dragonborn, so he can make spectral energy wings and fly with them. They only last for one minute and need to wait 24 hours to recharge. Everyone except for Electria begins to look for a book that interests them. Elder finds a book about Elder Dragons of the New World. Feline finds a book about Rathalos. Specifically one on the Rathalos that is in the egg that they have required. Isaiah finds a book with the various cooking recipes in it. For Hulkshire just watches everyone looking at different books. Since he still can't read, he doesn't even bother looking through the books. As everyone finds a book that interests them, we all hear the Lao Shen Lung again. You lied. Get out. It says. What's that about? Isaiah asks. I don't know, Farley says. Everyone gathers at the entrance and leaves the library. What's wrong? Farley asks. You claimed everyone here was all the people you came with. But others are gathered outside the temple. Others that have followed you. The Lao Shen Lung replies. We were followed? Farley asks. They plan to destroy the temple and the knowledge I seek to protect. The Lao Shen Lung answers. We can't let them find this place. If we close the secret door, they won't know about the library. Farley says to the party. We all quickly leave the secret room and close the hidden door behind us. We begin to walk down the long hallway when we run into three people. Two unknown people wearing elegant looking cloaks and Fexish. Fexish, what are you doing here? Farley asks. I saw you leave Astera quickly. I got worried something was happening. This is quite the find you have. To think, the ancients built this directly under where Astera sits today, Fexus says. He looks over at the two people with him. Burn it down, he says. You can't do that, Farley exclaims. Actually, I can. Guild policy says any ancient ruins not under guild control should be destroyed. And since I'm one of the three in charge of Astera, I'd say this is my jurisdiction. Vexus replies, We we won't let you, Farley says with a look of anger on his face. Oh, you think you stand a chance against me, Vexus says. He draws his dual blades. He quickly rushes forward and it hits for Helectria, knocking him out. He then turns to Farley and does the same. Farley! Isaiah cries. He rushes towards Vexus and swings. He misses. Fadeline runs up and heals for Helectria, bringing him back up. Unfortunately, my initiative was before Fadeline's, so I lost my turn. Elder takes a swing at Vexus, but also misses. Fexus's body begins to shake violently, and he appears to create two copies of himself. All three copies rush forward and knock out Isaias, Feline, Vahelectra again, and finally, Eldir. As we all begin to pass out, we hear Fexus speak. Don't worry, I won't report this incident to the guild. You all show potential to be useful. But get in my way again, and I won't hesitate to kill you before you can blink, he says. We all lose consciousness, and that 
is where the session ends. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this video, please like it to let me know, and comment any questions you have down below. Don't forget to subscribe and watch more videos, and click the link down below if you want to watch me stream on Twitch. I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.